This episode of Prop 3D is brought to you by Autodesk. Welcome to Prop 3D, your guide to 3D printing for prop and costume making. I'm Brittany Duran, and today I'm going to show you how to make an amulet of Talos from the video game Skyrim with real metal. You can check out the full 3D modeling video in the link below, but here's the highlights. In Autodesk's free 3D modeling program, 123D Design, I used sketch tools to draw half of the amulet, then extruded and mirrored the shape. I used the same technique to make the amulet details. To make the amulet curved, I made a copy of the amulet and subtracted a large cylinder from it. I then subtracted the amulet's copy from the original. The amulet details also got curved by subtraction. I used more sketch tools to outline half of the spiky thing and revolved the shape. I also used revolve to make the amulet handle and then added some cylinders for the connecting pieces and fillet the edges. I rotated a thin cylinder and used path pattern to evenly space copies along the path. I combined all the amulet's pieces and extruded the base to add extra depth for the one part mold. I then printed the model at highest quality on our Dremel 3D printer. The model is super tiny and only took 30 minutes. I lightly sanded the print and cleaned up the small trenches I used one of our painting stands with some double-sided tape to suspend the model. I brushed on two layers of Smooth-On's XTC 3D to smooth out all the print lines. Suspending the model helped me brush away any of the pooled XTC 3D. I made a one-part mold container by super gluing the amulet to a piece of plastic and hot gluing a used masking tape cardboard cylinder to the base. I used high heat resistant silicone from Smooth-On called MoldMax 60. The silicone can withstand up to 560 degrees Fahrenheit. The silicone is measured by weight and you have to be careful not to add too much of part B since the ratio is 100 to 3. After mixing, I degassed the silicone to eliminate as many bubbles as possible. Then I poured the silicone into the container. 24 hours later, I now have a one part mold. Woohoo! Now, to get in the Skyrim spirit, Bill and I are gonna level our blacksmithing skills. We picked up this adorably tiny precision melter and ladle. The metal we're melting is a lead-free pewter. The pewter is soft enough to be cut into pieces and added to the pot. Bill tested this process by molding his old tiny space gun master. The great thing about practicing this new technique is you can melt off castings back into the pot. I'll be back. Now it's time to cast a metal copy of the amulet. I dusted the mold with baby powder to reduce surface tension. I set the precision melter to almost the lowest setting. The pewter turned into a liquid after about five minutes. Make sure to wear gloves and a face shield. It's molten metal after all. I skimmed off the metal slag with the ladle. Then I scooped up some liquid pewter and poured it into the mold. The metal starts rapidly cooling the second it leaves the pot, so you have to work quickly. It took a few tries, but after three attempts, I got a pull that looks pretty awesome. I sanded off the extra uneven material from the back of the amulet. This can be done with a rotary tool, but I found that a belt sander works the best. I cleaned off the surface with steel wool and buffed the amulet with a metal polish. It's so shiny! Bill drilled a hole in the amulet for the necklace attachment. We picked up some cool jewelry pieces at our local craft store for some embellishments and the necklace chain. I could have left the amulet all pristine, but I decided to weather the amulet a bit to look more like the in-game model. I used acrylic paint to brush on some of the burnt sienna color into the crevices. Then I brushed off the extra paint. I painted the necklace pieces at the same time so they would match. I mixed paint to be different shades of a patina and added several light layers with a sponge and by hand. I still wanted to show off the metal underneath, so before the paint dried, I cleaned off the edges of the amulet. Once I was happy with the paint, I started assembly on the necklace. I cut a length of jeweler's wire and fed it through the amulet, checking the length by temporarily adding the necklace pieces. I used small pliers to form loops on either side of the wire. Then I pried open the chain and attached it to the loops. 
I added a necklace clasp for easy wear. And that's it! The Amulet of Talos is complete! Now my Dragon Shout cooldown is reduced by 20%. Thank you so much for watching. I learned a lot with this build, and I hope you did too. If you want to try these techniques at home, the tools, software, and materials necessary are linked in the description below. If you haven't watched our previous 3D printing videos, go check them out. Also, please subscribe to see our future tips and tutorial videos. And that's the end of Prop 3D Season 1. We hope the show encouraged you to add 3D modeling to your Maker tool set. See you next time!